Hello everyone and welcome to a new section of Learning WebRTC Application Development video tutorial. Upon completing this video, you will learn how to handle WebRTC data channels by simply editing and adapting the previously developed client. Thanks to the previous knowledge of WebRTC peer connection object, we will see how to manage data channels and what we need to change in the code. Open up Eclipse then copy the main servlet.java class and paste it in the same container. Eclipse should ask for a file name. You should give it the name data servlet. After that, open the newly created data servlet class file and start editing it. As you may understand, this brand new servlet should use a different URL for request back services. So, we should define a new URL. We can use the keyword data just after the website root. For this reason, we should look into the file for all the variables reporting the website root URL. As you can see, the first variable to change is in the doGet method and it's named redirect. We simply add the keyword data before the question mark. However, please note that we have to assign a URL mapping for this new server with URL using the keyword slash data in the web.xml file. Then we edit the variable named room underscore link, which we pass to the web client as a configuration option through the HTML page. Finally, the HTML web page template, which we will create from scratch to better support all the new functionalities we will develop. That's all, we have finished on the backend side. As you can see, the editing was minimal because this kind of servlet is only responsible for handling the signaling through the chosen HTML web page. Once we change the URL of the servlet and its serving HTML template file, we're done. Duplicate the template.html file as you did before, then copy and paste it in the same location. Eclipse will ask you for a new name. Give it the name template underscore data dot html. Then open it up. After that, start editing the template matching its first usage, data channel handling. First, we change the web page's title and give it a different name. Then, we place inside the page a brand new CSS according to the tags we will use here. After that, we remove the media constraints from the respective array variables. In this case, we only want to send and receive data through a peer connection object, so we don't need to ask media resources access to the user. Then, remove both the IDs with IDs container and button container. We won't need them anymore. We are in the process of defining new HTML structure and style. We leave the console container to print some logs. Finally, we also add a new variable named data constraints, which will handle, if necessary, any constraint we want to give to data channels. Now, we need to define a brand new HTML structure. Let's create a div named wrapper, inside which we place another container named menu. This has two paragraph containers, in which we will write down some information about the connected user and the button for leaving the app. Now move on to the JavaScript side. We can do the same thing as before. Copy and paste the main.js file and create a new file named main underscore data dot js. Then open that file and start editing it. First of all, we don't need the variables local video, mini video, remote video, local stream and remote stream anymore, so delete them. Also, we don't need the STP constraints variable because we won't use any additional resources from the user. However, as you can imagine, we also need to add a data channel variable to handle the data channel we will create. It seems we completed our backend. However, if you check our previously executed steps, you will see that we missed one thing. We haven't added the URL mapping for our newly developed servlet yet. 
we add the URL mapping for the data servlet by defining the URL with keyword slash data. In the next video, we will see how to properly create and handle peer-to-peer -peer chat systems based on WebRTC data channels.